Hello friends, good morning, good evening to all my dear masters who have joined from various parts of the world. A warm welcome to day 10 of Digital Dhyani Yajna Yogam presented by PSSM Global along with Digital Swadhyana Yoga India. It's an extraordinary stage which brought various masters across the globe to share their great spiritual wisdom. I am Nikita from USA. My deepest gratitude to Brahma Shri Pitama Subhash Patriji. Uh, also, I thank Sai for giving me this great opportunity. Uh, it's my honor to introduce our today's speaker, Mr. K. S. Suresh. Mr. K. S. Suresh is the CEO of CTDI India, the subsidiaries of CTDI Inc., and also a trainer, body, mind, soul, and meditation concepts. His inquisits for spirituality started quite early in 1996 when he joined in for a two-week course, Siddha Samadhi Yoga, which teaches on food, mind, breathing, and meditation. Till, uh, till then, he was a hardcore non-vegetarian, became a vegetarian by choice, and now a strong supporter of vegetarianism. He has spent a lot of time in self-learning courses on mind control and healing, and realized that meditation or meditative state is the foundation and base material of all. Since then, uh, since 2009, he has been experimenting on his food habits and its links to senses, mind and body. He got introduced to Pyramid Spiritual Society's moment and Anapanasati meditation and realized that this is the simplest and most powerful of teaching meditative state, consciousness and tap inner energy. Since uh, his initiation to Anapanasati meditation. He has conducted meditation sessions in using meditation to many groups, small and big, at various corporates and educational societies. Today, he enjoys the bliss of meditation and practicing mindfulness, awareness in every walk of his life. His vision for life is to induce meditation to each and every person and create a wave of consciousness which in turn helps every being to be mindful, be in mindfulness, self-realization, be naturally happy, healthy, and loving. Masters, join me in welcoming Mr. K. S. Suresh, who has joined us from Bangalore, India, to share his wisdom on the book As a Man Think It by James Allen. Hearty welcome to you, sir. Uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, uh, pranams and namaskars to all the masters who have joined in and uh, I uh, thank uh, the Mahadrashtra Trust uh, team, uh, the organizing committee and uh, uh, the whole of uh, our team who has created this uh, platform, uh, you know, in conducting such a wonderful program, right? So usually we talk about various uh, concepts or uh, uh, we talk about uh, conducting workshops or doing, uh, you know, many other uh, uh, themes. But uh, this uh, concept of uh, you know uh, having sessions based on a book, right? Uh, and that is uh, digital uh, dhyana uh, swadhyaya yoga. Uh, so uh, which is uh, given by our uh, Brahma Shri Pritama Patriji, right? So it's a great uh, uh, you know uh, concept to continue, and then it's a new experience for me also to speak about specific about books and about an authors and also. Uh, share it more a uh, practical context or implementation context, uh, you know, and based on my experiences on these books and uh, living on this, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you call the ideals and uh, a walk of life, you know, so it's, it's good for me to express myself uh, through these, uh, uh, you know, uh, sessions and the platforms. So thank you very much uh, for joining in. Uh, so today uh, we'll speak about um, a book, uh, you know, Swadhyaya, uh, in, in the Swadhyaya Yoga, we'll speak about a book, uh, you know, this is called uh, the, As a Man Think It, as uh, said by Nikita. So, okay, so I'll be having a couple of slides to talk about it, and then uh, it'll be easy for you all guys to follow. And then we'll discuss, and then we'll also have a bit of uh, Q&As uh, during this session. Uh, and then uh, uh, we, can, we can have more practical discussions around it. Right. Uh, can you just confirm if you all can view my screen, uh, someone? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, so just to talk uh, quickly about uh, this book, right? Uh, 
Uh, this book is, you know, I'm happy to tell you that this book is uh, close to a decade old. Now. So this was published in 1903. And uh, James Allen is a great uh, British uh, philosopher and writer. Uh, who has written a lot of inspirational books. Uh, he has been a poet and a pioneer in uh, self-help movement, right? So self-help movement is all those people, uh, something like a DIY, do it yourself and experiment on yourself and uh, you know, gain your own experience. So he has been a great uh, inspirer and uh, a writer of books. And then uh, he has lived through 1864 to 1912. Can you just imagine this book? It's such an amazing book. Uh, I recommend each one of the masters and you all should read this book. It's, it's a pretty, uh, not a very uh, thick book. You can see it's just a, a 50 page book, right? So, uh, and it gives such a, a good amount of insight. And uh, to tell uh, personally about my linkage to this book, right? So this was my first uh, 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 generation book that I was reading uh, through. And I was, uh, uh, you know, inspired so much that, you know, it, it helps you to introspect, it helps you to think about uh, what these thoughts are all about. So he has written this book as a man thinker. That's uh, one of his most popular books, the most uh, successful books of uh, uh, James Allen was a, as a man thinker. And, uh, you know, he has uh, given a lot of quotes and insights about uh, what thoughts are all about and then how thoughts will affect uh, the entire construct of a human being and in turn the society and the, in turn the world, right? So uh, the very basis of the creation of uh, what we are today and what the society is today and what the world is today, especially the humankind, <clears throat> is based on the thoughts that we create, you know, so that's such a wonderful concept he has uh, created and then he has given uh, quite a good insights about this uh, about the thoughts right so uh, one of the uh, wonderful quotes that he has if you can see on the screen right a man is literally what he thinks his character being the complete sum of all his thoughts right so it's like uh, you know uh, whatever a human being or a person is today is nothing but uh, a sum total of all the thoughts he has created till date, right? So uh, that means like, uh, uh, you know, whatever we are, like whether we are happy, we are healthy, we are uh, uh, prosperous, we are depressed, we are angry, we are uh, deceased, everything is nothing but a result of whatever we have uh, generated or uh, thought about, about myself or ourselves or about the society. Right, that's the that's, uh, exact thing. So uh, just to start with an example about this quote, right? I will uh, compare this with uh, something like, uh, if suppose we have a bank account, right? Uh, uh, if I have a bank account, it might have got created somewhere like say, when I was 18 year old, uh, I would have opened a bank account. Like suppose I am a 50 year old person, not today. So it's like 32 years of uh, transaction has happened in this bank account. And your balance as on today is nothing but the sum total of all the transactions that you have done, whether it you have withdrawn, you have deposited, you have borrowed, you have uh, taken interest, uh, given interest. Uh, the balance as on today is nothing but the sum total of all the transactions that we have done in this particular account. Uh, you know, from to the you know uh, when I was 18 years old and then till I became 50 years also, right? So and as we continue our journey with the bank account, it again the balance uh, purely depends on the total number of transactions that we have done. Similarly, you know, a person what he is today or she is today is nothing but a transactional summation of all the thoughts and emotions that we have generated out of our mind, right? That that's how it can all be summed up, you know, a very simple truth and yet a very profound and uh, insightful, uh, you know, uh, thought provoking uh, quote uh, given by James Allen, right? I uh, don't you think so? It's, a, it's a, such a, a great uh, approach and uh, thought to it. So uh, starting this as a curtain raiser, so masters, I would like to have, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, start the session with the 10 minutes uh, meditation and then uh, we'll continue the session as it is, right? So, and uh, uh, to do the meditation, so it's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, I hope uh, I'll just uh, guide uh, those masters who are actually new to meditation. And then uh, it will be a very simple exercise. 
and I'll be playing some soft music, and then uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, you can actually, uh, you know, be with the breath, and I'll, I'll just give some small guidance about it, and then we'll end the session. When we end the session, we'll have to just uh, put our hands on our eyes like this uh, for five seconds and just open our eyes. So I'll be guiding you through this uh, now. Just uh, give me a sec. So if you can see the screen, right? So I'll be introducing you to Anapanasati meditation here. Anapanasati is nothing but uh, inhalation and exhalation and being one with it. Are observing the breath, right? So, ana is inhalation, uh, apana is exhalation, and sati means becoming one with it, right? So, if you see here on the screen as well, it gives some uh, instructions. So, I'll be uh, taking you through these instructions. One is we are first thing first, we have to close our eyes, then be seated uh, in a very comfortable posture, either on a chair or a, uh, or a, a floor or a mat. Either you can take rest of your back or you can sit straight, whatever is your comfortable position. And uh, you'll cross your fingers like this. And if you're seated on a chair, uh, on a, uh, you can cross your legs like this. So be very comfortable, remove the spectacles and uh, as far as possible, darken the room, right? So if you darken the room, it, you'll have a much better experience of meditation. And uh, here, uh, what we are going to do is when we say observe the breath, it doesn't mean that, so we don't do a Kriya. So we don't uh, forcibly take uh, the inhalation and exhalation. We don't do an exercise here. The whole day we are breathing involuntarily. The body knows when to breathe, when to inhale and when to exhale and when to breathe uh, softly, when to breathe uh, briskly, when to breathe very fast, when to breathe shallow. The body knows and it all purely depends on the emotions that we carry, right? So we are only going to be a witness of the breath. The whole day as we are not controlling the breath and but we are not aware of the breath. But here, what we'll do is we'll be aware of the breathing process, right? So uh, my friends, uh, their masters, so what we'll do is uh, we'll close our eyes, uh, cross the fingers, cross the legs, sit very comfortably. Observe the breath entering and exiting out of your nostrils, the entry point of your nostrils. Be aware of that point and observe the cool air going in, warm air coming out. So in between, what happens is the mind, like a monkey, jumps from one branch to another, like it jumps to the past tense or it jumps to the future tense. You know? So uh, the idea of this uh, meditation is to bring you to your present tense, that is balancing and centering yourself. So when you observe the breath, you will come to the present moment because the breathing is happening in the present tense, not in the past or in the future, right? So uh, as and when the mind tries to wander, uh, recall that you have to observe your breath and come back to the breath. I'll be guiding you through the process. And um, uh, let's start. Uh, close your eyes and uh, cross your fingers, cross your legs. Uh, observe your normal breath. No chanting, no visualizing, just you and your breath.
Sir, we can't hear you, sir. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Gently place your hands on your eyes for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Just put your hands down and gently open your eyes. Open your eyes. A big clap, masters. Thank you, everyone. So uh, it's such a, a wonderful uh, session of meditation. We just finished about fifteen minutes, right? So let's uh, get back to our. Uh, the book of the day and the concepts and the practical applications around it right so i was just talking about uh, uh, a while ago though for those who have joined you is that a man is literally what he thinks 
that's the uh, subject and that's the topic of this book. And uh, a quote by James Allen says, uh, any human being, whatever he is today as on date is nothing but a sum total of all the thoughts that he has generated or he has created, right, for his life. It's just like a bank balance of a bank account, which is nothing but the balance is nothing but a debit credit or uh, you know the interest adjustments, all the transactions put together gives you the balance for the day. Uh, however old the account is, right? That, that's how we will compare the bank account, right? And uh, as we all uh, <clears throat> are in meditation, right? So we all come from a meditation background and we have just finished the meditation. So it's all about uh, you know observing the breath and then uh, observing the thought and then making sure that we become more aware of the thoughts. Right. So one of the uh, important uh, uh, point that uh, James uh, quotes is that, you know, um, it's uh, a man's mind. Like, say, where, where does the thought sit? You know, the, the, sit, the thoughts sit on, on the man's mind. So the mind is a, more like a virtual platform. It is like the, it's a farmland or it's a garden where, you know, it's like a completely a layer of soil, right? It's, it's like when a clean uh, soil is available and then whatever you sow on the soil, uh, whatever seed we sow is what we are going to grow, right? So the thoughts are like the seeds and uh, the man's mind is like a garden's uh, uh, ground where a human being has its uh, uh, free will to cultivate or sow the seeds whatever he wants to create his life like you know so either he can create a great life or he can create a very distressed or a depressed uh, life right or he can grow garbage uh, and, and it doesn't understand what his life is all about right so it's like either you can make a very beautiful garden growing whatever wishful uh, fruits and vegetables or greens that we want to grow or we just don't know that it's like a wild place you know completely full of weeds and uh, nothing we can make use of it you know so that's that's uh, how he compares a man's mind and this mind is uh, you know completely filled with thoughts uh, regularly but a person who can uh, wishfully willfully consciously uh, create the thoughts that he wants then he creates a beautiful garden or a, a lawn or a you know a, a farm that he wants right otherwise it will be just like a you know a, we don't know what's growing here right you can see in the picture so in the previous picture you could see you know you can see uh, uh, images of all the fruits that you know what we are trying to sow and what we are trying to get out of it and but uh, when you come to this stage we don't know what's growing it's all about weeds you know the, it, we don't know what is the purpose of the life or what is the purpose of my day Right, so we, we all have to live with a purpose, right? So everyone has to have an ideal uh, state of thinking as to yes, this is the purpose of my day, this is the purpose of my life, this is the purpose of uh, this job, this is the purpose of my family, this is the purpose of me studying in this college. So we should all have a purpose, and that's that, that that's like sowing the seed of a purpose of a education or health or anything like that. So. If we don't know what is the purpose, if we don't know consciously what we are creating, then uh, our life becomes just like what you see in this image. We don't know what we are sowing. We don't know what we are getting. Uh, we are really a confused lot of people, right? And that's that's exactly the situation of the whole world, right? Many people, we don't know what is the purpose of our life. We don't know what we are creating. We don't know what we are sowing. We don't know what, uh, you know, finally we know is we are uh, reaping some fruits or vegetables or whatever uh, uh, results, but we don't know why it's coming and where it's coming from, right? So there is always a cause and effect. Like in the Indian mythology, we ha have a karmic uh, uh, karma yoga, karma siddhanta. Karma siddhanta, uh, this, um, the, as a man think it is purely based on the karmic uh, principles or karmic philosophy. That, you know, whatever we sow, so we create and whatever we sow, so we reap. Right, so it's all about that uh, concept, and that's how it all starts working. And uh, James Allen has written this book. Uh, you know, this book can you imagine? It's almost like hundred year old. You know, it was uh, uh, printed uh, way back in 1900s, and then we are now in 2020. It's been more than hundred years now, and then it's still a great book.
And uh, uh, I have connected a couple of things just to help you all understand uh, more scientifically also. So the one which we talked about is more philosophically, right, Master? So I also wanted you to understand scientifically how have we understood, you know, what is the way we can understand? How, is, uh, is it really true? Uh, is it really uh, right that, you know, every thought matters, everything matters, every emotion matters in our mind? So let's try to see what the science also says. You know, so whatever you see in the picture, right? Uh, uh, it's an experiment conducted by one of the great uh, masters called Masaru Emoto. He's a Japanese uh, scientist, but is a highly spiritually inclined person, and he wants to link spiritual science and uh, material science together and help people to get the benefits of the spiritual science in day-to-day -day affair in a materialistic uh, world. Right, so if you see this uh, image, you can see roughly uh, five pictures in this, right? And uh, this is uh, what he did is, he wanted to measure or uh, see the effects of uh, human emotions or human thoughts on his body and uh, external environment. That is like uh, every thought has an impact or effect as what uh, James has said, but he has proved it in uh, real terms or in scientific terms. So what he did is uh, he wanted to study uh, the, eff you know, the effect of emotions or the human thoughts on the body in itself and then external world. You know, is it really going to impact the world you know, what, for whatever I think? So what he did is he took uh, five bottles of water, like he took like this a bottle of water. So he took five bottles of water. He held it or they held it like this and they gave an emotion or a thought to that water saying that, you know, uh, one bottle, he, they took it and just nothing. He just held it and then keep it aside. And then another water of, uh, bottle of water, they took it and they did a praying, you know, so they, whatever uh, religion uh, it was, so they just held the bottle and then say they just prayed and they made a prarthana. And uh, one more bottle, they took it like this and then said, thank you very much. You know, you're such a wonderful uh, thing in my world. And I, I really love, you know, well, thank you uh, for whatever, you know, because I drink and I'm living because of water. So I said thank you with great uh, uh, respect and gratitude. And uh, he kept that aside. And then one more uh, bottle, they took it and then they started cursing the water, saying that, you know, I'll kill you, you make me sick. And he gave a very, uh, you know, a strong anger to that. And then uh, kept aside. And another bottle, they said, I love you, you know, and uh, I thank you, I love you. And that bottle was kept there. So all the five bottles were frozen. And then, uh, then once it was frozen, they observed the uh, ice crystals, right? The, the molecules, ice molecules under a microscope, electron microscope. And this is what they observed, right? So just holding the bottle for a moment and giving the emotions or the thought to it and then observing that under a microscope, you can see how the impact is on the molecules, right? You can see for whatever you didn't do anything, it was a, a different structure. Wherever we offered a prayer, it has a different pattern. And uh, wherever we said, thank you, it has a beautiful pattern there. And when we said, you make me sick and I will kill you. So you can see, you know, uh, it's, it's giving a different, um, you know, uh, effect altogether. And then when we say love and appreciation, Right, so it's 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 all about uh, you know uh, giving that uh, a different pattern altogether. Right, so uh, this is this is how uh, it actually looks like. You know, so uh, just imagine uh, just a, a small feed of emotion or thoughts has so much of impact on, on the water bottle and the water molecules. And we as a person, right, uh, we carry these emotions, we carry these thoughts. And we are made of 75% of water or 78% of water, isn't it? So just like Earth has, a, a, you know, 75, in excess of 75% of water, we are nothing different than Earth, plane, Earth planet, right? So we also have a lot of water within our body. And whatever thoughts and emotions we create, it has a definite impact on our body. And also it uh, communicates to the external layer and it shows the impact outside also like how it impacted the water bottle, it will also impact the environment. So we'll talk more about it, right? So, and uh, it has also been scientifically studied that uh, a normal human brain or a mind generates about 50 to 70,000 thoughts in a day, 
right? So you can imagine how we are impacting our ourselves with these thoughts, which we are creating con consciously, unconsciously, uh, through our own conscious or subconscious minds. And uh, imagine what type of impact we are creating on ourselves and uh, what we are creating on the environment and the society and the world in total, right? So it is very, very important uh, concept uh, to understand. And then uh, this really brings us to the necessity of a, a be creating a mindful world. You know? So observe your thoughts, intentions, and emotions. You know, that's, that's what I can say out of this. And then when I correlate the, uh, the, the concept, what uh, uh, James Allen speaks, you know, you are nothing but what you are today is nothing but the sum total of all the thoughts. And this experiment actually validates that point that, you know, yes, it depends on the thought, it depends on the emotions we carry and, um, you know, whatnot, you know, it gives everything what we want, right? So uh, any questions uh, so far, anything you want to clarify? Anything that you want to speak, uh, you can raise your hand or type on chat box. I'll pick up and or I'll embed those discussions uh, as I continue the session, right? Anything so far? Okay. So let's uh, continue uh, further now on this. Right, so yeah, you have something on chat. Okay, thanks. So uh, this is this is the impact of uh, our thoughts and emotions, and then uh, when I look at it here, right. So uh, further on this. Right, so we'll, we'll try to understand more. So uh, James speaks about a uh, lot many things about the thoughts and uh, the type of thoughts, the different clarity of thoughts and then conscious creation and things like that. So usually uh, we are all burdened like this, like in the previous slide we saw a normal human being generates about 50 to 70,000 thoughts or in excess unless he's spiritually inclined or he's practicing mindfulness or he's in meditation. Uh, otherwise, it is creating like a reckless creations or reckless thoughts that is generated in the mind. And that has been shown unknowingly, knowingly, and we'll start getting the results, right? So this is the way a human being feels that, you know, he is burdened, right? Uh, when he has a lot of thoughts uh, in his mind, and then it's like carrying a baggage uh, where you don't know you, where is it? It's like a virtual bag, which is very heavy. And you don't know where the bag is. You're seeing the bag, nothing is there. So but uh, you're carrying a weight. You're feeling that, you know, I'm feeling very heavy. I'm feeling very burdened. I'm feeling very stressed or depressed or whatever it is. Because we have been creating all these negative emotions and we usually carry these thoughts, you know. And the society now is built up in such a way, or we are creating the society in such a way that, you know, we are talking about anxiety about the future and regrets about the past. And then uh, thinking about bad about others, it's uh, hatred, it's jealousy, it's violence, it's about killing, uh, it is about talking wrong things about others, right? So all these are actually creating the world we are today. And then we are carrying those burdens and baggage, it's creating a stressful body and mind, right? So. This is how uh, it is. And then uh, what it happens is, you know, it, it actually creates, uh, you know, uh, whatever we want, we call this health. Like say, uh, if uh, it is also been scientifically studied uh, also, like we saw in the previous slide, like say it, it is impacting the mental and physical health, right? So mind, mental health is created, and the physical health is, the mental health gets spoiled because of thoughts and the physical health is created because of the mind. Because if, suppose I want to raise my hand, first I, my mind, I decide that yes, I want to raise my hand. And then, you know, I, uh, my hand raises because the body is nothing but a slave of the mind. And when I lift my hand, it first creates an impulse in the brain and then uh, it sends the instructions to the motor nerves and the muscles and the whole thing works. And then it sends an electrical impulse then then my mind says, okay, lift the hand, then it, it goes up, right? Uh, so the brain also is com controlled by the mind and the mind is seated with the program of the thought. 
right so if the mind decides you know i'll not lift the hand and just leaves it there so that means every single action or reaction or instruction that the mind uh, gives uh, to the body it, it hears and it adheres to it you know so if the mind says you run there is some danger so you start running very fast right so when you say stop it will stop so similarly uh, when we uh, uh, look at the modern day science it says 99% of the disease is psychosomatic uh, that means whatever comes in the psycho that is in the mind it is affecting the soma that is the body right so whatever we perceive or think that you know yes i am going to get infected or i am i'm really getting very feeling unhealthy or uh, if i eat this this is going to happen like this you know so whatever we create and it is impacting directly on the physical layer also and uh, it creates even the blockages in the body the nervous problems or uh, whatever uh, we have issues uh, you know uh, whether it be it uh, cancer or be it uh, any other uh, complicated disease everything is driven by the mind and the thoughts that we create right so uh, he says physical health and the mental health is very very vital part of human being and that gets affected mainly because of our mind and thoughts and uh, definitely if we want to live a healthy and a happy life and a physically enjoyable life then it's better we uh, observe and keep our thoughts clear and then don't think about wrong uh, uh, deeds or you know uh, respect your body and feel the energy and then always uh, create a thought which gives uh, more happiness and more uh, energy to the body reassurance and say you know the body has a, a great potential and very healthy i am feeling good and uh, thank and respect the body and uh, appreciate every cell of your body and say so thank you very much for you know uh, digesting my food thank you very much for making me get all the experiences that i am getting in this physical body and physical layer right so if you have a sense of gratitude you thank and you appreciate the functions and features of the body and use it in a justful and rightful way then the body becomes so healthy and vibrant and energetic right so the physical health actually is created uh by uh, exactly the creating a healthy thoughts also right so the body is a slave of my mind just like i said lift your hand it lifts that's how it is going to be right so uh, the second thing is whatever we want to achieve like be it education also right say uh, if i give you a very small example right so if uh, i want to see all the people uh, who are studying or all the people who are uh, studying science they will be found in science colleges i mean all the uh, people who are studying law you can find them only in the law colleges right so all the people who have thought to study law will end up in a law college right all the people who want to do a scientific research they will end up in research institutions so anyone uh, you will not find any person uh, who is not uh, you know uh, come there to study science because everyone would have thought that yes i'm going to study science and i'm going to research on some uh, subject so everyone joins there so if you go and find uh, uh, you know introduce each other and find out then everyone wants to study science there right it, it cannot be something else because everyone has thought in a particular pattern and a direction and everyone has got a certain thought process so everyone goes and meets in the same a uh, location and that's why uh, even the education that we get you know the we demand and we create what we want but the external teachers and the education comes to you externally once we want something right so that's how uh, it how happens there so and uh, even uh, the life partner we choose so we create uh, vibrations we set the expectations to the external world then um, it's like like uh, you know it, it actually resonates and uh, we uh, create a, a set of expectations that you know this is the type of partner i'm looking for this is the type of partner i don't want so uh, rather than creating what you want if you say i don't want this i don't want this it's actually going to attract more of that you know because you are creating more of i don't want what you don't want so if you so more of what you don't want you are only getting going to get what you don't want because whatever it speaks the, the nature the universe responds to the same a uh, feeling like say i if you decided that i want to go and science, study science then you are end up going to end up with a science institution so if you say i don't want to study i don't want to study so you naturally not will not end up with an education institution at all similarly like even if you choose the life partner so you have to create that in the mind 
as to what is the type of partner, an ideal picture. It's like, it's called as a dreaming. Uh, it's called visualizing. Uh, it's called uh, creating in the mind, in envisioning it. So everything is envisioned. So uh, there's a lot of stress given on how we are going to envision, how we are going to, like uh, the dreamers are the best creators of the world, right? Because in the dream, uh, like our great Abdul Kalam, our ex, uh, you know, the, the, the late uh, uh, president of India, like Dr. Dr. ABJ Abdul Kalam, right? He said that, you know, we dream and uh, you create, you know, uh, you, you dare to dream and then you create in reality. So similarly, you know, whether we are talking about education or love or even fortune, everything is first created in the mind, you know, so we imagine, we visualize. And um, the, if I say, if I, if I want to have fortune, then you have to create a scenario or a picture of yourself enjoying and being in that fortune and not that you are still living in a very poor condition. It doesn't matter in what condition we are currently in, you know, it only matters what you're going to dream. And the dream is eventually going to be answered by the universe because the universe does not judge you. The universe does not tell you, you know, you are only a beggar today. How can you be a millionaire? It doesn't judge you. It only knows what you want and it will give you the way and the path and the opportunities and create the whole ambience and environment and the whole earth planet prepares to give what you want, right? So if you are a poor person and you always uh, curse about the poor condition that you have, you curse the people what you have, you curse the people who have uh, you know, given birth to you, if you curse the environment around you. So you're only going to create the environment more and more, more and more because every, uh, you know, visualizing every thought that we are creating, like cursing the person is like you're sowing a curse uh, into the soil. So you are like, you don't want that, but you're still creating more and more an abundance of that curse or blaming the people, right? So you're going to get people only who are going to be blaming you and you blaming them. You know, that's how we're going to create. But if you want to come out of this trap, he says conscious creation and conscious awareness is the only way, uh, you know, which we can, uh, look at it and then uh, that's how we can uh, talk about it right so and uh, we uh, usually fall into that same trap of creating only those things which we don't want to create because uh, we are so uh, uh, scared or we are so uh, depressed or we are so uh, suppressed by these uh, physical conditions or emotional conditions in our family in our uh, office or environment uh, the worldly conditions that you know we don't dare to dream what we want right so let us all dare to dream what we want right so so if we don't dare to dream what we want uh, then we cannot create what we want and that's that's exactly what it talks about right so we all like it's it's like a you know uh, a simple example right you know um, there is one rich person right uh, <clears throat> there's a rich man Every night um, he is afraid that you know he has so much of uh, cash and gold and a lot of property. What if there is some person, uh, a burglar, uh, uh, you know, a thief comes and robs him? You know, every night when he sleeps, he just gets some a spike of fear. I have so much of cash. I have to be careful. You know, to be alert. Right? He creates only that, and then every day is watering. He has sown a seed of fear and then insecurity about the fortune that he has. Every day he waters it by recalling the thought again and again. <clears throat> and there is a one great uh, robber, right? Uh, he's a, he thinks always, you know, I want to get a big jackpot. You know, I always want to get a big hand and I get a, I want to have a big bounty. So every day he dreams about the big bounty and creates the thought. And then both the thoughts mature. The rich man gets what he wants. So he gets released from his uh, fortune or wealth. And the robber gets what he wants, you know, whatever he has created, the rich things that he has uh, uh, created that, you know, he wanted a bounty. So when both matures, like, you know, when it starts giving the fruits, it gives you the fruits and then both of them get what they have created for, right? So that's exactly how it is, you know, every single thought is correlated and it has a meaning for it. It has a perfect, uh, you know, uh, results uh, for every single thought that we create, every single emotion that we generate in our heart and mind, right? So that's uh, very important. It's like a continuously uh, moving weaving machine, you know? So the weaving machine is like a mind 
and the design that we feel in the weaving machine you know it's like a loom where we want to create a, a design on a sari or a shirt or a, a, a printed material or a sweater so it's like a, you have a loom it's playing up and then you are continuously feeding a design so it is a non stop activity right so the mind is like a loom uh, it's a weaving machine and then the thoughts are the design that we are feeding out of our thoughts and based on the design the output actually changes dynamically it can give you a flower it can give a picture of a dragon or it can change the colors of the threads or it can change the size of the design smaller bigger you know uh, more dense or uh, you know more scarce and you know uh, the type of uh, you know thread that it takes and selects the loom can do all the changes right it's it's like the mind can do whatever it changes to the thought tells tells it and based on what the mind and the thought creates the body and the, the environment around us acts according to the design that we have created right it's a perfect we are creating the design every minute every um, uh, thought like uh, even if you are like say someone um, comes and uh, cuts your hand or you meet with an accident so it's not a coincidence it's a perfectly planned if a perfectly designed creation that we have created uh, even if someone steals you you get cancer you get uh, uh, fortune you get a lottery uh, you get a big jackpot or you get a hit with a great job uh, a great uh, you know friend who can help you in a big way everything is not a coincidence you know it's a perfectly you know created intersection of thoughts at the perfectly intersection or a demand and the supply right it's like you are going to a restaurant and ordering for food so the supplier or the waiter will only give what you have ordered they will never serve you what you have not ordered but what you have you have forgotten what you have ordered right so you start quarreling with them right you know i did not order this why did you bring it because you have a memory loss issue right you order it within 5 minutes you lose your memory so the person who serves you brings whatever you have ordered but what happens is then you will not accept it you don't have a sense of acceptance and you don't realize that you are the one who ordered these things and then you start fighting with the person who has given you the food and said i didn't order the pizza i had ordered you the rice right so then he says okay so you see this is the order i have written down and you can ask your friends and uh, i can see it is punched in my system right same thing it's similar right uh, from uh, one instant to another right we keep creating 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 non stop but when it comes to ripening of the uh, you know the germination and when it gives fruits then we start uh, fighting and uh, getting agitated why did it come to me why is it happening to me why everyone is cursing me why is it everyone blaming me or why everyone is appreciating me right everything anything uh, that comes to us is not a coincidence it's a perfect creation it's a perfectly balanced world right every thought has an accountability just like i told one rupee or one dollar deposited in a bank has all the accountability the bank doesn't say it's just one dollar sir just forget it you know it doesn't say like that they say one dollar is a one dollar it is added to your account there is a calculation to it you know every single thing is accounted so similarly every thought that we generate every thought that we create has an accountability has a result oriented to this right so it's such a wonderful world right so it's a and uh, when we uh, if i extend this a bit more right uh, when i talk about uh, you know in a spiritual context uh, we are not just come here only in this lifetime alone right so if i want to extend from what james has said and add some more flavor from my end right so we are not come here just appeared out of nowhere in this lifetime you know my i as a spirit or i as a soul is a continuous thing you know there's no discontinuity it's a continuous thing it's everywhere it's an omnipresent energy it is spirit it is soul right so whatever we are today is because of uh, the last life that we left and the intention we got to create uh, our experience that we got for this lifetime and what is the experience we want to get in this lifetime so uh, it doesn't so happen that you know whatever i have created in the past life it just disappears after the past life it also carries forward to the future uh, i mean the next life and next generation or many lifetimes also it's like uh, you know in a simple way if i want to tell you right you know it's like uh, 
one uh, financial year to another financial year, we always have a closing account of a PNL. There's a profit and loss account and there is a balance sheet, right? So the profit and loss account says whether you have lost the money or gained the money, you have made profits, then it adds the balance sheet into your profits. You know, your assets will go up. Or if it says you have lost the money, then your assets will go down or your cash flow goes down. It hits the balance sheet, right? So if there is a liability to be paid, so from one uh, financial year to another financial year, it doesn't get uh, nullified. It doesn't get excused. The bank, if they have to they get the money from you, they will come behind you to take the money, even from one financial year to another financial year. So similarly, we change our bodies, we change our lifetimes, we change our dimensions of the uh, planes or planets that we are in. But it doesn't uh, you know, excuse you from whatever we have created, whatever assets we have created. Like if I have hurt someone that comes back to you, if I have given good things from someone, it comes back to you. So we have to give and take an exchange of uh, things, right? That's part of a karmic siddhanta. It's called like, you know, the past is called all the uh, sum of all the past life is still there. Like I said, the bank account has the sum of all the transactions. So similarly, all the past life transactions or creations or karmic accounts is still there. That is called the Sanchita Karma. Okay, it's called the Sanchita. And then the current life, it's like a current account. You have created a company, you have taken some money from the Sanchita, uh, brought it to a current account. You have invested in the business and then uh, you will gain or lose and then you will carry forward to the next life. That is next financial year. Right. So that is called Agami. Uh, Sanjita, the current life is called Prarabdha. You bring certain karmic uh, uh, you know, uh, balances. Uh, you say, I will only consume this much of Prarabdha, uh, Sanjita, and bring it into this current uh, stage. This is the drama I'm going to create. These are the players. These are the actors. So we create all these things and come here to experience certain things. And then when we complete this lifetime, we carry forward. So the previous uh, Sanjita, plus the result of the prarabdha gets added up, you know, plus or minus, whatever it needs to be, then it goes to the agami, that means the future. So the, there is always a free will in this lifetime. So irrespective of what we have created in the past, right? We have a consciousness, it's called the free will world. We can decide, you know, even if I'm suffering on a deathbed, I can decide, I can read a book, I can listen to music, I can enjoy and start smiling. I like and crib and cry and uh, I can uh, curse people for whatever you are, right? So the choice is a free will, right? So whatever the choice is, if I'm not aware of this particular moment of creating a choiceful life, then, you know, it is always going to be, you know, a, uh, you know, a vicious trap of creating all misfortunes, ill health, depression, relationship problems, you know, whatever the world is seeing today, right? All the anxieties, the hospitals going up, uh, ill health, you know, the insurance companies are going up, there's more terrorism. So all this is created because we are all thinking about it. So we all have a choice, like we all meditators have a choice. We have made a choice that we are going to meditate. We are going to reduce the density of our thought and we are going to be conscious about what we are creating. So it is a choice. Right? And I'm what come what may, I'm going to be happy. I'm wearing a smile on my face. Right? So I'll wear a smile on my face. I'm going to thank for every single thing that's happening in my life, whether it's good, bad, ugly, I'm going to take it equal. So I'm going to thank the whole universe for giving me this platform to play my role. Right? So the choice is mine. Right? So uh, that's how the life is. And uh, uh, we are the creators. We create our own uh, realities. That's what our a great uh, uh, Patricia uh, says, right? So we create our own realities and we create our own, uh, you know, uh, uh, life, right? So we are the masters. That's how it is, right? So, so any, any, uh, I hope I'm uh, uh, more uh, in a flow and then hope it make, it's making sense to you all. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can stop me or otherwise uh, we can continue. I'll just uh, hold on for a few seconds. If you have any questions, you have any queries. Yeah, okay. So let's uh, carry on friends and uh, masters.
So this uh, session is pretty interesting because it's all about thoughts. And I told you, you know, it's 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 like, a, you know, a, a, it, it, a, a James also talks about, you know, a, a, you know, a sow and a reap, right? So if I look at, if I look at this tree, right? Uh, if I look at this tree here, it is uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, it, it, you can what you can see here is uh, a mango tree, right? Uh, it's a tree uh, with full of uh, uh, mangoes, right? How many seeds do you think we need uh, to get this big uh, tree and with so many fruits? How many seeds do we need to sow to get this big tree? Right? I hope definitely everyone, unless uh, you know you are not gone uh, crazy, so everyone would say, I just need to sow one seed to get one tree. Right? Unless the uh, seed fails, then you may have to sow another seed because the seed would have failed or it wouldn't have germinated. So for all the seed that is actually, uh, uh, that is possible to germinate, we just need to have one seed to get one tree like this. And, and that one tree can give you hundreds and thousands of fruits and it can keep giving, right? So uh, this is called the cause and effect theory, right? And uh, what James also says, and we also know in our own philosophical terms, that you know, if you give one, you get ten, right? If you give one, then you get hundreds of it, right? If you do good, then you get hundreds of good things in your life. If you do bad, then you will get hundreds of bad things or tens of bad things in your life. Like if you sow uh, one seed of mango, then you uh, you are seeing it here that you know you are getting thousands and hundreds of mango uh, fruit in the tree. So isn't it so wonderful, right? Even in the thought also, it also impacts in the same way, right? Uh, we, I usually uh, uh, take some examples to it, you know, how can one thought that I create can give so many results? Can it give so many fruits to me? You know, only one thought, I would have thought something, right? you know, I may get cancer or I may get diabetes or I can get a jackpot. I will win a great job with the bonuses and I'll get a great car. So whatever it is, right? And one thought will give rise to thousand after effects and thousands and thousands are after, after effects of the uh, thought that we create, right? Say, it's like, uh, you know, a, a person thinks, you know, like say there's, uh, there are two brothers, right? They, uh, you know, who has a mother of about 35 year old uh, brother and the elder brother of 45. And the mother is about 65, I assume like that, right? So they all go to have their mother checked with a doctor when she has uh, uh, three good friends. One is uh, diabetes, one is uh, blood, you know, uh, the BP and something like uh, arthritis. Uh, she has a great, uh, three great friends and they all go to the doctor and then say, the doctor says, look, uh, guys, you mother has uh, three great friends, right? Uh, and your father had uh, four friends. Right, so you rather be careful. You know, your father also had a heart problem. So you, your mother has three problems. Your father had four. So it looks like you may also get it because sometimes it may also get to be genetic or hereditary. Or you may also be careful that because it can also affect you. Or you may also get into one of these uh, catching with one of these friends. Then uh, uh, one brother, you know, like a 35 year old brother, he says, you know, come what may, I will not get into this. You know, I, I will never get these friends with myself and then the brother of 45 thinks that you know yes i may get something like that you know let me be very careful so what happens is you know every uh, single thought that a person generates if you look at it here like uh, if you look at the image here the brain uh, here the brain generates something like an electrical impulse right it, it generates an electrical impulse and then uh, the electrical impulse will have two effects to this Okay, every single thought will have two effects. Okay, one is called in technological terms, one is called as a wired effect. The other one is called as a wireless effect, right? So the wired effect is the one which is an electrical signal that flows through your body. So you have nerves in your body, right? You can see this, uh, the wires that goes and controls literally every single organ, every single body part is controlled by the nadis, the electrical impulse that flows in the nadis that actually makes you to operate your hand, listen, walk, talk, uh, you know, chew, see, 
you know, speak and um, sing, dance, jump, everything. So everything that needs needs a connectivity through the nadis. That is called the etheric body of the uh, the connecting nodules, the neurons, right? So every nerves uh, are again uh, drilled down into neurons, you know. So there are a lot of signal carrying, impulse carrying, instruction carrying mechanism of the body, right? That is all called as a wire. You all must be knowing, right? Your tube lights, your fans, they are all connected through wires. Once you switch on, then the fan will turn on, then the tube lights may turn on, or the a geyser may turn on, right? So that's called wire effect. And you all know you have a mobile phone, so uh, we all use this. It's called wireless, isn't it? So we don't have to uh, teach everyone what is wired and wireless, right? So we know, right? So when we uh, generate a thought, like I was telling you about uh, we generating 60,000, 50,000, 70,000 thoughts. So every thought will give two results. One is called wired result that will impact your body. And the other one is called the wireless effect. So if the brother has thought, like, you know, a 45-year person, he thinks that, you know, yes, I may be diabetic someday, right? Then that body, as I told you, the body is a slave of your mind. Then he says, okay, Baba, I listen to you, master. I will be a diabetic. It's like sowing a coconut, uh, you know, uh, sapling, you know, uh, uh, you will put a so coconut sapling. So it will give you results in five years. It will give you so many coconuts. So same, something like diabetes also is like a coconut tree. After five to six years, the body will become diabetic, right? And uh, what happens, the whole body, every cell is programmed, become diabetic, become diabetic, become diabetic, become diabetic. Like you see, uh, you, you keep one uh, uh, heap of, uh, you know, a small uh, heap of uh, sugar, and then there are some ants, then the moment it sees the ants, you know, you will see every ant will carry one granule of uh, sugar, and then they keep carrying to their more, right? So similarly, if you see, after some time, you will see a big line of ants carrying, you know, a white crystal of sugar, and then you can see it's such a beautiful pattern. Similarly, our uh, cells and the neurons in the body is no different than the ant, uh, you know, group. You know, every cell is like a soldier. It just listens for some mind commands, and it says, "Okay, Baba, I'll do it. Okay, sir, I'll do it. Okay, boss, I'll do it." You know, it's like, you know, a genie uh, just listens to the master. Right. So the whole body cell starts vibrating, getting programmed to become a diabetic. Right. So and just imagine the universe is so beautiful. Right. It just listens. It doesn't judge you. Like you, if you talk about a fire, a fire doesn't have its own polarity or negative or positive. If you use it for cooking, it is good. If you use it for uh, burning someone, it is bad. It, it itself is not negative or positive. So the universe also doesn't judge you. Uh, it only gives, it only knows, okay, tatastu. it gives only blesses, whatever you wish it will give you. So the person who is like 45 year old, he has, uh, you know, wish that he will become a diabetic, right? So it gives uh, unconditionally, it gives uh, unconditional love. It, it just says, whatever you want, take it, it's there. So what happens is it sends a signal to a, if you look at a hospital, uh, a person who is building a hospital, you ask him why you are building a hospital, he says some deceased person will come. So if you ask a, a factory who is manufacturing syringe uh, 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 injection, so they'll say someone needs it, you know, I'm manufacturing syringe. And if so, if I ask someone who wants manufacturing bed or uh, bricks and uh, stone uh, walls and, you know, uh, uh, windows, and then all the thousands of people who want to build the building, they just don't know. They say, I'm building a hospital, you know, we don't know. There's someone who is going to come here. So when all, when the person's, uh, demand gets matured, then the hospitals are created, then there's a medicine created, there's insulin created, and there's job for so many people, right? So just one single thought, you can imagine how many results it's giving, how many fruits it's generating, right? So it's such a wonderful world, right? So every single thought has a accountability, every single thought gives you results. But some thought may be slow in manifesting, some thoughts may be fast in manifesting, like you have, you grow coriander, it just comes within a month, right? If you uh, take some uh, wheat, uh, wheat uh, granules and then uh, grains and then sow it, it gives, uh, you know, it germinates within, uh, you know, a few days, it gives you green grass, right? Or if you sow a mango tree, it takes many years. So it depends on the intensity of our thought and emotion that decides the a time difference between our creation to manifestation, right? So it all depends on the intensity of the brainwave, the intensity of the emotion. Like say, 
if you are so angry about a person you just want to go and kill that person or if you are so crazy about a person you just want to go and hug that person right if you are so intense about that thought if you are so uh, crazy and mad about that creation you know the creation happens very fast and if you are so afraid of certain things and uh, literally you may fall dead uh, right on the spot because your heart can stop pumping blood because you are so shocked and you are so intensely impacted by the thought of uh, you know a snake coming and biting you uh, just because of the fear you may collapse on the floor and you may die of a heart uh, arrest right so that's how impactful the uh, manifestation can be right if you are so choked right and so affected because of the fear you may die instantly so the manifestation has happened instantly right so if you have a slow poison right a slow death uh, a strong poison is strong death you know immediate death or similarly uh, and, uh, you know a nectar or a poison right it, it doesn't matter right it, it just uh, creates it doesn't judge you know whether it's male or female positive negative black and white sun and moon gold and silver it doesn't matter right? it, it is it is all created whatever we want it doesn't look at the polarity of good bad you know negative positive it doesn't really matter here so it all uh, depends on what we sow like whether you uh, sow a bitter gourd or uh, uh, you know sweet uh, you know uh, watermelon it just grows that the the, the soil <laughs> the soil or the mind itself doesn't judge you know what is actually you're sowing it doesn't say hey, it's bitter baba don't sow it it doesn't tell you right the nature and the universe doesn't really stop you from creating whatever you want to create are baba it's so sweet don't eat it or don't sow it you will become diabetic you know it doesn't tell you right it just gives you whatever you want right it's abundance it's unlimited it's non judgmental it's universal it's infinite we can create infinite things in our life right so the problem is you know uh, the only only thing is we as a human right we don't know what we are creating right if you see this tree master so what is the name of this tree can anyone say what is the name of this tree can anyone say what is the name of this tree it has so many different things so this is how usually our life is right you know that's what even jane says even i have experienced it myself so we don't know what we are sowing every minute every moment we don't know what we are thinking we don't know what we are carrying in our mind we don't know what emotions we are having right so it's really uh, you know a reckless creation it's just unconscious creation we don't know what we are doing it right so uh, that's why if you see here it's like a mix crop mixed food we don't know we are just like a you know an unconscious farmer just he doesn't know what seeds they are he is just taking one big bag of seeds and then he is just throwing the seeds on the on the soil you know uh, you know it's like they what will you call those farmers you know it's a, a mad person he doesn't know what he is sowing then he is going to also get the result right so we also uh, you know the humanity is turned out to be like mad farmers you know they are sowing the thoughts uh, recklessly unconsciously and that's why we are creating the world the way it is today you know it's a wave of uh, you know unhealthy things the wave of uh, all the uh, unrest a wave of all the terrorism the wave of all this uh, you know mafias uh, whatever a political system we are responsible for it we people we our thoughts our collective thoughts and just like uh, you know i want to sum it up here that you know just like uh, james says you know a man is literally the sum total of all the thoughts at the same time the world the human kingdom today on the earth plane is is nothing but a sum total of all the human thoughts that we have created in the earth plane as on today right that's the reason the world is like this no one has to be blamed we are all equally responsible to be in this plane in this vibration in this experience in this situation of the world we are all equally equally responsible for it right don't you think we are all responsible for the world we are living in don't you think we have created it because every moment every situation as we saw in the uh, you know the uh, experiment of masaru emoto a bottle uh, just one thought of uh, one emotion it gave rise to uh, uh, reorganizing the crystals or patterns of uh, the molecules of the water similarly the external world also gets this wireless signals and that's how it is all getting created right if we all think about ill health then we create more hospitals if we all think about being healthy no medicines no doctors 
No insurance companies are required. If I don't have accidents, if I don't uh, create an accident in my mind, a fear of accident in my mind, if I don't create a fear of unhealthiness in our mind, no doctors, no medical. Like uh, if I'm buying bananas every day and uh, 100 people are buying bananas every day and they all stop eating bananas, then there's no demand, there's no supply, right? And something else will be on demand and that will start growing more, right? So it's purely a supply and demand. There's cause and effect theory. Right. So the world today is a perfect uh, paradise or a hell or a heaven, depending on what we as a humanity are creating. So that's why, uh, you know, we as a as a human, right, I would call that as a thought pollution that we are creating. Right. So the mother of all the pollutions that we have is a thought pollution. Mother is what gives the birth to a child, isn't it? Mother is a creator. Mother is giving the uh, the home, uh, you know, uh, a place uh, as a call as a womb for the child to grow up, as a, for a baby to come up, and then she is giving uh, birth to a child. So similarly, you know, we as a creator of thoughts, we are the thoughts are the mother of all the create all the pollutions that we are creating: noise pollution, uh, air pollution, water pollution, or whatever uh, uh, problems that we are creating. You know, the mother of all. Uh, uh, good and bad are nothing but the thoughts. So uh, meditation actually is is one way, right? You know, uh, to create a serenity and a calm mind. Meditation is one way, right? Uh, like we when we did meditation, uh, we observed our, our breath and we realized that we are getting a lot of thoughts and we reduce the thoughts by observing the breath again. So we become conscious of the mind. We become conscious of the thoughts that we create, and ultimately. We get a calm mind because there's no many thoughts and like it's like a, a plain land, you know, and you know what you are sowing, then uh, you don't create more weeds and what it's suppose you sow mango, then you get a, a great mango tree. So whatever uh, manure and water you are giving it to the tree, the tree gets 100% nutrition of that, 100% care of that. But if you create too many unwanted weeds, then you will have to go literally and search where is my mango tree, the weeds have grown so big. So the purpose of whatever you are struggling for, the purpose what you want to achieve is lost because you have created too many weeds that are not supporting the main seed that you have sown, right? So that becomes an agitated mind and a very uh, you know, disturbed mind and a distressed mind and a depressed mind and a stressful mind, right? So, and uh, becoming conscious of our mind and meditation is one way where we can observe and reduce the density of thoughts. And that will create something called as a calm mind and it creates a serenity within us. Uh, we become more serene and we become more calm and peaceful and pleasant, right? So ultimately, uh, the solution to the world today is a calm mind is required and to achieve a serenity, right? So let's all target and progress towards uh, achieving a calm and the present mind masters. And then, uh, you know, and if you uh, actually... Uh, when we achieve uh, uh, awareness of thoughts and when we achieve uh, in a calm mind and become more conscious, more mindful about every single thought that we create, like, uh, you know, we call it as a enlightenment or awareness, like uh, of a mind, uh, which is like a home, like come back to your mind, come back to your home, right? That means we all say, right, come back to yourself, come back to your mind, come back to your home. That means if anyone wants to, uh, you know, come to your home, uh, enter your home, then they literally knock your door and ring a bell, isn't it? So you open the door and see uh, whether he is a person whom you want him to come or uh, whom you want to meet. Then you say, welcome, Baba. So thank you for coming. And you give them, uh, you know, uh, uh, coffee, tea or snacks or lunch or dinner. And if you want uh, get uh, to know that this person is not the person you are expecting, then you say, no, Baba, you please carry on. I don't need you. And then you close the door. So that's how our mind should be, where a thought knocks on your mind and says, can I come? Right. So that's called enlightenment. That's you know an enlightened society. Right. It's like, uh, I would say it's like a Six Sigma of thoughts. Like, uh, you know, you know, Six Sigma is like, uh, you create a, a, you know, one in a million, right? Uh, if you produce million thoughts, one thought you should not be aware, then you call Six Sigma, uh, you achieve Six Sigma black belt on your mind status. Uh, then you become Buddha, you become enlightened because every thought you are aware, every uh, action, every, you know, emotion you are aware of, right? So 
uh, that's called enlightenment awareness or mindfulness right so and when we become more aware more and more getting aware of it more and more uh, you know uh, observing our breath more and more then we can achieve one is a pure and calm mind you know first thing first we will achieve a pure and calm mind uh, and then as we progress uh, we will get a we will get to know the right speech so we can know what we are speaking what to speak what to speak how to speak whom to speak how much to speak you know the right speech right uh, you know the right speech and uh, knowledge or uh, the wisdom of right speech right and then when we speak you know whatever your actions and deeds are is based purely on your mind and then the speech and the action is based on whatever you think right so that is called trikarna shuddhi is it called the manasa vacha karmana right so we call as a uh, uh, we have achieve a three layer uh, shuddhata or purity purity of mind leads to purity of speech and purity of speech and leads to a purity of action and deeds you know so that is called karma kshetra right master so it's such a great uh, thing so i could just try to join the dots like um, he has given a great book called uh, as a man think it and i could just want to connect the dots and then give you my context my experience uh, living with this book you know so i'm literally can see the effect of living practically on this philosophy and uh, how we can lead uh, to a serene life you know how we can actually understand our thought uh, like a seed and we can generate more and more uh, the results that we want right so and uh, finally meditation is the way to awareness of thoughts and conscious creations of the world right so i wish every one of us each one of the masters here meditate and then teach meditation and spread meditation and awareness to the whole world right that's that's my uh, wish and that's uh, exactly what we all want to achieve in our real life situation right so uh that brings uh, to the final uh slide or the topic of the day right master so i'm up for a question and answers if you have anything for me i hope you all enjoyed and you can get get you could get some good context of what we were speaking for the day thank you so much sir it was a great wisdom session as a man think it described by described the power of thoughts by james allen i would just like to uh summarize some points that i got connected to so it was i mean you had really shared some real time examples of how we think and how it affects our mental and physical health and you've stressed that point always dare to dream i'm sure it must have gone into everybody's mind and you've really wonderfully explained how to consciously create how how we are accountable for our thoughts and i completely agree the world we are in here is all because of our thoughts yeah. so let's all meditate and achieve a better world and be aware of our thoughts and actions thank you so much thank you, thank you. so anything uh, anything on the chat pod uh, chat box or any questions by participants um or students or you can end the session after the clean day with meditation okay right that's that's what we'll do so we'll uh, have some a uh, few minutes for our q and a and then we'll end the session with meditation again yeah uh, i don't see any questions here from the panelists do we have any questions thank you no nope. i think we can go ahead with the meditation okay sure anyone uh, yes. okay so anyone wants to speak and unmute uh, or you allow them to unmute uh, yes so one yeah right after all so you want to see the slide after water molecules okay so okay this is the one this the one you want to see this slide or or you want to see the slide of water molecules 
or after water molecules this is the one yeah this is a wave of you know we, we call this a cloud of thoughts you know the cloud of thoughts leads to the results what we get like the rain doesn't come just and rain somewhere you know it has a purpose for raining also in a particular place the clouds comes from somewhere and then it rains on a specific area right so it's like a moving cloud it rains perfectly at a perfect spot you know? so wherever we are whatever we are qualified for it rains uh, the rain of education health love fortune everything rains for a purpose yeah hope it's not a very complicated topic for masters uh, are confusing anyone there <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is one of my favorite subjects and topics right so i have just picked up some of the slides from my uh, workshops called body mind uh, soul you know and uh, so where we talk about emphasizing why meditation is so important so all this like you know the the concepts of psm it's perfectly blends with this right so, and it's a perfect book for swadhyaya within the psm group or the meditators or the spiritual seekers that uh, as a man thinker it is a great book for uh, new age uh, though it's a 100 year old book right it was printed somewhere in 1913 uh, you know it's more than 110 years old but uh, just imagine the relevance of this book even today So you were speaking, Hello. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, today you have explained in a very, very simple manner, very understandable, giving you live examples of bank account. It's very, I really uh, touch my heart. Is uh, some balance of uh, the period from opening of the account to the day of uh, requisition? It is some balance you will get that. Like that, your karmic efforts also. Some balance of uh, uh, you know date of birth and to the present day of uh, your recognition. Very very uh, simply explained and uh, as you saw, so you read. There is a one more thing you know, explained. A one small seed is enough to get thousands of fruits. And uh, like similarly, if you sow a positive thought, you'll get positive results. If you sow a negative thought, you'll get negative results. Uh, this karmic effect. Everything we explain in a very crystal and transparent way. Nowadays, it's very much uh, useful because everybody is uh, getting fear of this uh, COVID-19. So, whatever you think, if you are fearless, the COVID-19 will not touch you. If you are, uh, if you are thinking again and again, again every moment, definitely you'll get there. That's what you said. Uh, it's a wonderful way of expression. Very clear and. Uh, Touching everybody, very understandable. Uh, thanks a lot, Suresh. Ji. It's a very good thank you, uh, session. Thank you, sir. I really enjoyed, and thanks for your feedback. Also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sir, session. Can I speak, sir? Yeah, please, ma'am. Session was uh, excellent, sir. Sir. Uh, 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 I want to know how you came into PSSM, sir, in which year and uh, life transformation about yourself means, sir, before meditation and after meditation, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, please tell me in uh, detail, uh, detail, sir. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, in, so which in, very... in which year you came meditation by through, yeah. by whom and uh, what are the transformation before meditation and after meditation? Sure, so, ma'am. So, Definitely, it's uh, you know I I went into a, a spiritual journey, right? Seeking spiritual answers or the you know uh, maybe uh, you know some of the questions that I had, I started seeking on it uh, through books somewhere in uh, 1996. So as I mentioned, I ventured into Siddha Samadhi Yoga and then uh, started experimenting on many things like Reiki, and then I picked up some of the Western courses like Silva Mind Control. And then um, you know uh, you know uh, you know there's again an author or a, a, a trainer called you know uh, Bert Goldman you know he talks something about quantum jumping and a quantum healing right so I picked up and something like you know 
Ed Dames, uh, who talks about remote weaving, right? We talk about third eye experience and things. So, so it teaches something called remote weaving. It trains, you know, the uh, US uh, CIAs and the military personnel to uh, get themselves psychically enabled, right? So they, he teaches uh, remote weaving, like we talk about third eye remote going to other dimension plane. So uh, I've gone, spend a lot of time and money on these sort of things, uh, experimenting on myself, uh, both on spiritual context, the physical and mind layer. So I did silver mind control, the basic and ultra mind uh, ESP sessions. Then I did hypnosis, uh, remote uh, viewing, quantum healing, jumping, and all these uh, concepts. And then I'm a Reiki second degree master. So I started experimenting all of, all of these things. Then, and I, I was an extensive reader of books. And uh, I love books, and you know, whenever I travel, and I travel, I love traveling as well. I travel all across, all over the world, right? different countries and different uh, parts of India. Right? So I carry a book, and I uh, finish books like what Patricia recommends. Right? So, and I love books, right? So especially on the spiritual scientific context, right? You know, that's how I pick them. And um, when I uh, started doing all of these things, you know, then I said there's something beyond it. Then uh, that that very seeking itself i think we i got uh, to meet uh, patriji in uh, 2009 10 and then uh, the first experience was a, a totally different he was like uh, a sculpture hitting the stone and knowing where he is hitting right so that's the experience i got that he he hit me hard on wherever i need to shape myself right uh, i realized it so he was telling you know you should uh, be like a gandhi or a buddha and that's how I realized, you know, I have to be in reality and truth and serve the humanity. And that's where I intensified teaching meditation. I came into meditation in 2010 in Anapanasati. And then he said, you have to be a Buddha, meditate more, you know, and uh, uh, be in uh, non-violence. So, and, uh, you know, uh, that's when I started teaching. So when I came into PSSM, all the myths uh, got uh, cleared up because I, earlier to that, I was practicing uh, Vipassana mode of meditation where uh, you know it's not freely thought or it has a particular ambience or people who are trainers and they are uh, qualified to teach but when we came into psm anyone can teach anywhere you can meditate anytime you can meditate you know so that's a anywhere anyone anytime meditation uh, that's what i realized and then gave me like a license to kill uh, so i can kill anyone with meditation you know? so i mean kill their thoughts kill their mind and make them no mind you know that's how the license to kill is given by PSSM, right? That's all I can say. And uh, we, and that came into my mind that, you know, we need to create more meditation centers. So we need to create more meditators. It's like, you know, uh, we need to have more fuel pumps as we have more vehicles. So we need to have more meditation centers to refill the my energies to humanity. So that's how, uh, that's my mission. And that's how I've been doing it. And uh, before uh, meditation, like it's like, uh, you know, everyone is responsible for my life. You know, it's not me. Whatever is not happening is because of someone else. So I, that turned upside down when we get into self introspection and then self knowledge, awareness comes in, right? Then we say, I'm responsible for everything what I'm creating. I am the creator of my own life. So that turns completely upside down. You know, you flip the coin and it turns ahead, right? So I am the head there. <laughs> so that's how it all turned. And then uh, as and when I progressed, I used to do uh, quite a lot of intense meditation. I was in Singapore for a year and uh, I used to experiment even foodless living, right? I, I, I even uh, I used to, uh, like I met Jasmuhin in Bangalore when there was uh, in a global congress of spiritual scientists. I met her many times in Bangalore and I was wondering how can you sustain without food? Then I uh, also uh, took up some courses or I, I saw some programs about a couple called Akahi and Camila. They are from the US and they teach uh, something called Britarian living. You know, they teach people how to move from eating to non-eating. So I experimented. I was a, a very hefty and fat guy right before and I was struggling to lose uh, weight. Then I realized, you know, even there is something called the foodless living also. And whatever we eat gives energy and energy can also come alternate energies like solar can come without uh, burning the fuel, right? Energy is energy, right? Ultimately, what we get out of food is energy. So I started experimenting on food. I started uh, eating once in a week, uh, sort of a thing. I lived like that for a year in Singapore. I was there uh, all alone and then uh, my family was here. So I could experiment more and meditate a whole night. Like one year I meditated for almost like uh, from uh, evening 10 p.m. to morning 5.30. So that gave me 
uh, for me, 2010 was my spiritual rebirth, you know, a year of uh, awakening for me. And that's all I can say. And then on, you know, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, like it's like a, um, you are facing a, a sea of water and you get drowned with the waves, right, uh, before that. And now I am sitting on a boat of spirituality. However big the wave is, I'm going to sail on it. I'm just going to enjoy the big and small waves, you know. So it's like thrilling uh, life. And uh, it says, you know, effortless living, you know, whatever the samsara sails you up and down, but you're still enjoying. You know? So that, it's like detachment is attachment. That's the concept I can say. So I can sense that and I can feel it. Uh, the effortless prosperity, health and happiness. And uh, both, uh, you know, a personal life, uh, the social life and spiritual life. You know? So the worldly life as well. Yeah, that's 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 the a brief or I would say a long uh, story about <laughs> my uh, journey on spiritual science and its effects. Rishi, definitely you're a killer. Uh, not unlike uh, killing of Caesar by Brutus, you are killing the evil thoughts of all humanity and making this earth a paradise. So, so definitely uh, your workshops, your teaching it will lead uh, to a uh, divine place. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for giving me this platform. I'm really blessed to be here. Okay, so uh, should we meditate unless we have any questions or any feedbacks? Okay. Yeah, we'll meditate for a few minutes. Yeah, we'll just. Uh, shall I yeah. play the music or anyone wants to play the music? Same music, you can continue. Okay, yeah, thank you. I'll just continue the same music and then we can meditate for some time. Right. So, Masters, uh, close your eyes, observe the breath, the normal, natural breath. Be with your breath.
टेन नाइन एट सेवन सिक्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन जीरो जस्ट फुट योर हैंड्स ऑन योर आइज फॉर फाइव सेकेंड्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन जीरो जेंटली ओपन योर आइज gently open your eyes come back thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you sir it was a great meditation session thank you thank you very much yeah uh, thank you so much digital swadhyay team really a great uh, i mean i would say we are so fortunate to have this uh, sessions just getting knowledge in two hours of the entire book and this was a great wisdom session sir uh, so before we end the session i would like to mention about the spiritual india magazine uh, which is a great work by our spiritual india team uh, this magazine brings to you the spiritual concepts shared by patri ji and all great masters across the globe uh, we would like to uh, we'll be playing a small video a short video let's see that thank you thank you so much for the team for giving me this opportunity to host and i think let's meet tomorrow on yeah. at the same oh, time yeah uh, nikita ma'am your anchoring it was uh, quite good you are uh, looking beautiful up on the externally and internally also uh, thanks a lot and suresh ji uh, you made us uh, a good format showing uh, what you what we uh, thought and uh, yielding of positive results is a really wonderful session let us not be mad farmers uh, let us uh, think in the right way and bring this uh, mother earth a heaven thank you once again suresh ji for uh, thank you for bringing you. such a wonderful session enlightening all of the film masters and the all viewers of this session thanks a lot thank you sir thank you thank you master thank you for all for participating and giving me this opportunity thank you very much Thank you, sir. Session was excellent. Anuradha, thank you very much. Thank Session you. Session was excellent, sir. Okay, we Dai. want further more classes in future. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Sai, Sai, close the session. Sai. Uh, uh, we will conclude the session, sir. Now. Sai, Krishna. Okay. Krishna.